This is just a short supplemental video for indirect fire. Uh, here's the lesson objectives that we're going over during today. I just want to emphasize again, make sure that you don't plan targets for indirect fire systems that don't have the range to reach them, whether that is too close or too far. Uh, and then you can refer to the table in ATP 3-21.8. It's got a lot of good information and details about those different weapon systems. I want to emphasize two things that you're going to get from higher that will be contained in the order that you receive, right, from if you're a platoon leader that you receive from your company commander, right? The first one is priorities of fire, and right? That's this table that's shown on this slide. So what this does is go across each phase, all right, and break down during that phase which sub element has priorities of fire from which weapon systems. All right, so you can see in the table here if you're first platoon, then during phase two you have priority fire for mortars, and during phase four you have priority fire for the 155 howitzers. Um, so that's a planning tool and it helps the uh, artillery units or the supporting indirect fire units know. Uh, who they prioritize, who they give assets to first. All right now, if you don't have priorities of fire, um, you can still request them. Just realize that someone else uh, is going to have priority over you, and if they want something or they need it, they get it first. All right, and that's just how that's going to work. Um, but that lets the uh, guns be laid in and already kind of organized and, and oriented a certain direction to support someone. So when you do have priorities of fire, you get them fast. Um, the other side of that, like for example, first platoon in phase two, all right? 155 howitzers might be great, all right? And maybe you want to request those because that's a bigger gun, but you have priorities of fires on mortars. So if you put in a request for mortars, you're going to get it, all right? So plan for that, all right? If you put in a request for 155s and you're counting on them, third platoon might want them first and you're not going to get them, or second platoon might request something and, to, you know, the company commander might decide to give it to them. But if you're first platoon, go ahead and use those mortars. Um, but you can still plan targets even when you don't have priorities of fire. And then that helps you also know what's your backup uh, weapon system. So if you're first platoon, your primary is to request mortars. If you can't get the mortars or they something happens to them, your secondary is to request the 155s. All right. The other thing that you'll get from the order is these target blocks. All right. That is um, something that comes in planning guidance you get given a segment of those. That's how they number things so that the indirect fire units, um, you can just call them and say, I want target number Alpha Charlie 3512. That's all you have to tell them on the radio and they'll know all the information to fire it um, because you planned ahead and you provided that to them. Uh, the way this works, so you don't just get to make up any number. All right, so you get given a block of numbers. So in this case, if you're first platoon, you have to use numbers between 3400 and 3450. All right, but within that, it's up to you. So if you want to say, hey, all of phase one will be, you know, 01 through 09, and phase two will be 10 through 19, and phase, you know, however you want to organize it, you can do it that way um, so that you can remember what those numbers are. Um, but you have to stay within the number block you're given because if you use something outside of that, then you're calling in someone else's artillery and it won't shoot for you. All right. So be looking at your company commander's op order to find out what are the priorities of fire by phase and what are your target block numbers and make sure you use your numbers. The video went into detail on the uh, TT Lodak. All right. Make sure when you give your target descriptions, you have both the target number that is in the appropriate range and a description of what it is because that helps the gun crews confirm that they're doing the right thing um, and it all makes sense they're not on the wrong line all right uh, for your trigger make sure you describe something and on call or TBD is not an appropriate trigger for a planned target these are planned we have to know what we're doing um, so when you cross a phase line or it can be conditional in that an event has occurred we get ambushed near checkpoint three okay um, things like that that'll let you know now is the time to fire off this this round uh, the location make sure you're giving a minimum six digit grid although ideally you should give eight or even ten if you plan linear targets all right remember that you have to give both uh, an attitude all right what compass azimuth they lay on and a length along with the location of the center point all right make sure you have an observer and it doesn't always have to be the fo all right any of your squad leaders yourself the platoon sergeant 
but someone has to be able to observe the rounds impact and confirm that the target is destroyed or more rounds are needed or adjust fire. Make sure that that observer can actually see the target. This is something um, a lot of cadets seem to have problems with. They want to just make it the FO and wherever the FO is, they're somehow supposed to magically see everyone's targets. Um, FO might be with another squad and not able to see a fire mission that's in support of some other squad that he's not with. All right, so be thinking about that. All right, form and delivery. Know what systems you have. Your primary should be something you have priorities of fire for if you have, if you do. Um, and partner that up with what makes sense with you actually being able to get it. Uh, your attack guidance. You got to think about what your target is. What kind of fuse do you want? All right, this is also your spot to lay out that you want HE rounds versus smoke. You don't want to mess that up, right? Or if you need a loom or some other kind of round, all right? Make sure you're using appropriate fuses that are best suited to the targets that you're trying to face. So if they're inside bunkers and you want that round to go through the roof and detonate on the inside or the inside of a building, you're going to need a delay fuse, all right, versus a point fuse or do you want airburst fuses, all right? And the last thing is your communication channels. Um, you know, it usually just comes out of your uh, signal operating instructions or out of the uh, signal portion of your hire's op order. You'll be looking for that. There's usually a fire's net. You usually want to be on the company net first. And if that fails, go to the battalion. But you might be able to use the ops net or something else um, as your alternates or contingencies. For a class, I'm giving you an in-class activity. All right. Um, the handouts that are available uh, have these same next couple of slides and the materials to complete it. All right. So this first slide gives you a COA sketch and describes the situation and provides the information you're going to need to complete the exercise. The handout includes the TT LODAC worksheets that you need to complete, as well as a scheme of maneuver overlay and a cleaner map with an AO overlay so that you can create your fires overlay. All right, that's all I got for now. See you in class.